Hello, I'm Connor Baxter. We're here for the Tiki Talk. Breaking down paddle technique, paddle heights, and uh, if you're tuning in live, feel free to ask questions, but we'll jump right into it. Sounds good. Right out, Trevor. Cool. Thanks for having me, Connor. <laughs> so we're just gonna start poolside, break down some basics, we'll move on to the water. Trevor can kind of explain it too, but any type of technique uh, lessons that I'm giving, I like to start off with two different styles. You got sprinting, and distance. So we'll start off with sprinting. I tend to go with the shorter paddle. We'll actually have a video about this, breaking it down a little bit even more. Why I do this, I tend to go a little bit shorter so that I can have a higher RPM. At the same time, I'm going with a bigger blade too. So then I'm not worried about getting the full blade submerged. I'm just worrying about turnover, getting as many strokes in as possible. Also what I like to do is have a little staggered stance. So if I'm paddling on my right side, I have my left left foot just countered a little bit ahead. So right now you're paddling on your left, correct? Yeah. Opposite. Put your right foot just a little bit ahead. So that exactly. outside foot. There you go. So that's funny because like I've just noticed then that, because you're a goofy footer, right? Correct. Yeah, see I'm natural. So I did I did the complete opposite. When I'm paddling on my left, I tend to be kind of straight and then on my right I do the exact same thing. See, and, and that's a common it. error too in general. Like a lot of people, whether you're goofy or regular, you'll tend to find, okay, I'm stronger on this side, and maybe it's not noticeable unless you look down, but you'll find one foot always a little bit further forward than the other. That's just coming natural from whether your regular stance or your goofy stance. For me, I'm definitely powerful and more strong on my left, and that's because I'm goofy stance. So I got my right foot forward, I'm powering on this side, especially for a short technical race or a sprint, 200 meters, I'll probably not even switch. I'll probably stay on that same side the entire time. Yeah. Cool. We'll just go right into here. Why I have the staggered stance, especially for sprinting, is really for that hip thrust, that hip movement. Sprinting, it's shorter and more explosive for sure, but this gives you side to side control and forward to back control. So you really can use that board, hopping it up to on a plane and uh, getting it going. First thing first, paddle forward, butt kind of comes down and back and we're dropping the blade into the water. We really want to emphasis, especially on the sprinting, that catch and release. Catch and then it's a quick pull and before your feet, so even sooner Trevor, before your feet, yeah. you want to take your paddle out and almost explode forward, land, explode forward, land. So it's this quick, high pace. We're trying to turn over, trying to get as many strokes in as possible. That's for a beach start, any time of racing that's shorter, or even in starts of races, some people you'll see them hot out of the gates, and that's when that technique can be utilized as well. If we move on to technical, if you have an adjustable, of course you can um, extend or lower your paddle. This race, uh, uh, we're just going with the Lima, and it's fixed, but you can change it a little yeah, bit longer. Adjustable. You might want to go even with a smaller blade, just to save the shoulders. Shorter, you're using more back power. Longer, you're using more upper body. And so that smaller blade is now gonna feel easy through the water. And we're doing a long, drawn out stroke. So it's same thing, paddle forward, butt comes down and back. And then you're just kind of standing up. And then standing up, yep. So that hip coming forward is driving the paddle forward. That's pulling the blade through the water accelerating your board forward. Also, this is really cool, you can notice, if I jump on that side or if you watch Trevor, why we also turn the hips and stagger the st uh, stance a bit is to get that paddle straight up and down. So a lot of people will ask, how can I paddle differently to go in a natural parallel stance? Just to get the board or the paddle on the other side of the board, my hips have to come to the side and my angle of the blade is actually at a little bit of an angle. So when I turn my hips, stagger the stance, now my chest can come up. So go back into that, butt back, paddle forward, and then we're standing up. Just like in the gym if you're doing a deadlift. And that's all with no shoulders, that's all in the legs. All in the legs. So that's a really effective stroke. Going to 18K, you know, Daniel or Michael, those guys love that. And they're just going slow and steady, consistent heart rate, and it's a long, drawn-out stroke, really clean entry, and your heart pulling all the way through back to your feet. So I actually had a question about that feet thing. 
because you, you hear different pieces of advice. You, you know, some people say you have to pull out immediately at your ankles. Yeah. I know for me in the past, I've kind of gone a fair bit behind my feet, and I yeah. that works for me. But how do you feel about that? I feel like with the blade coming anywhere past your feet, if you look at the angle, now we're pulling water up. Yeah, totally. So now what that means, we're pulling our bar board down to the water, almost pulling it that way in that angle, which, of course, in a sprint especially, we're trying to get our board up onto a plane. So that's why you see in a shorter race, you'll probably see me going just right in front of my standing area and just grabbing, catching, releasing, grabbing, catching, releasing real quick. Longer stroke, for sure. You're going a little bit like you're thinking about pulling the paddle out right at your feet and it kind of tends to come out right behind your feet. And that's not the worst case. You just really don't want to make it dramatic with a twist behind your back and really drawing out the paddle. We got chocolate here. He wants to join. Like resident. You want some? You want some paddle techniques, chocolate? You can come on the water with us. <laughs> so that's actually a really good tip, Connor. So what you're saying then is, when you want to shorten your stroke, if you shorten your technique, you got to yeah. shorten from the back, not front. Yes. Exactly. If anything, you want to keep focusing always, always on that entrance, that catch. The catch. Is so important, right? the catch. Yeah. And a lot of people will explain it by an upper body twisting, and all that is is just giving you more time in the front which is where all the power is coming. If you look at here, if you have a skateboard and this was mounted to the ground, I'm not gonna get a lot of speed by pulling my body like that. Like skiing at the starts, what they do, they slide their hips back and then they're throwing their whole body into it. So same thing with paddling, except for we're trying to glue our feet to the board. We're getting those hips back, plant the paddle, and then extending forward. And that's kind of the basics right there. So, what do you say? Should we jump on the water? Yeah, I want to see what you got. Let's do it. <laughs> <Have a look. laughs> we'll have Trevor kind of talking you guys through it. I'll be on the side, sweating a little bit, doing some sprints, and uh, we'll break it down some more, see how it actually looks on the yeah. water. All right, let's head over. Kind of dive in uh, on this old star over here. It's 24 and a half inches wide. It's actually our most popular board of the latest yeah. and the greatest so far? The, the inch narrower model is the one I won the Pan Ams on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so it's definitely a great board. Board works great in all conditions. And we're going to go do some sprinting, some distance, and get wet. Cool. All right, you paddle up there. Uh, these guys can come over here with me. Yeah, I'll do my best to try to explain what he's, what he's up to. <laughs> but right now, so we have the office over here to our. To and um, over here we kind of have a bit of a fun wake park and this is mainly the testing ground that we test all the new research and development pro projects like the hardboards and the inflatable stuff and everything. It looks like we have a couple guys coming off. So what I can see from my perspective is that that's kind of just creating a lot of lift, you know, like it's, and that's all it is for, for the boards. You kind of want the maximum amount of boards to be out of the water, right? So you want to try to create lift and that's why we have all these grooves and chimes and concaves and convexes underneath the boards to try and maximize that lift. And Connor's actually just doing it with his hips right there. And then, yeah, just, just to reiterate and explain the staggered... Uh, ...see it a little bit more, if you're looking down especially, when I have my feet like this, my blade angle is uh, really angled here, and that's why you can see it instantly, my board went to the right there, pretty quickly. Now, if I come back now, staggering the stance just a little, which of course on your natural side, whether you're goofy or regular, is going to feel more comfortable or uncomfortable. Staggering it like this, now when I put my butt back, my chest comes directly over the rail of the board. This is allowing the paddle to be perfectly straight up and down, so when I pull it through the water, there's less of the board going right or left. Totally. So do you find, kind of when, you, when you're trying to keep the board, like say, say if you're trying to turn the same direction that you're paddling on, would you, would you stagger your stance even more maybe? Yeah, maybe, for yeah. sure. And then, I mean, of course, if we're talking about that, the angle of the blade and the angle of the paddle, if you angle it more, of course, you can see now the board turning very much. So you gotta be careful with that. A lot of people have sometimes the problem with maybe the board doing too much of it. Yeah, too much swerving is a bit of fun. <laughs> I'll do a little sprint for you guys. All right, Connor's gonna do a sprint for us. Perfect. Yeah. All right. 
So let's see right here. So, of course, the catch, very important. I have a feeling. See there, he kind of does a half stroke to begin with, and now he's pulling out just in front of his feet. See how close he's getting to his ankle. So he's trying to kind of maximize his forward stroke, and what he's doing is just using that first half of the stroke that you usually use to try to get maximum lift out of the board. And then, of course, he's thrusting his hips forward, like you just saw, and that's kind of pushing that board out of the water and getting it to generate speed. Yeah, there you A lot go. of body weight coming down up, coming down up. Really cool, there you go. See how that board just comes to life? It just kind of pops straight out. That's instant acceleration, and the acceleration is key to getting ahead of the pack, you know? So that can all be done with that first short stroke that Connor's talking about, that half stroke pulling out before the feet. Now, do you want to show us a longer stroke, Connor? Longer distance, when you slow down, 70% slow down, kind of longer thing. Longer distance, we're in 10K, 13K. Totally. And also you can notice how Connor's subconsciously just adjusting the angle of his paddle depending on how he wants to tweak his direction. So you can tell if, if someone's a skilled paddler or not because they can paddle purely on one side and change to any direction they really want. And that's just by shifting, like Connor said, the feet positioning or pulling, um, changing the angle of the blade, pulling different pieces of water from different angles. That right there is one of Connor's, Connor's signature backhand turns as well. All right. So you can see it looks pretty similar at the front there. Like that's kind of, that longer stroke is kind of similar at the front and then he's not too scared to slow things down and kind of bring it to the back of your ankles, right Connor? Correct. 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 As you can see, it's really flat, pretty calm here. No headwind, no side wind. If you do get that, you want to keep in mind, your paddle is creating a little sail. There is resistance. So especially when we're heading up wind, really important to keep in mind if you have an oval shaft, it's a little bit easier, but perfectly done with the round, is when we release the blade from the water, give it a little twist. So instead of going this way, creating resistance, there's chop, there's wind, you hit there, you're gonna feel a little bit of unstableness, maybe it knocks you in the water, who knows? So just getting used to it, even in the flat, twisting the blade out. So whether you hit water, going through the air, heading up wind, all these little things can not necessarily make you go faster, but be, make you more efficient. So when you do get in the longer distances, you're not going to be tired or, tired or as worn out. Totally. And yeah. Connor, would you, that, that twist, do you kind of start that from your top hand or your bottom hand or both? It comes definitely more from the, the top hand with the yeah. handle. Totally, right? I use an oval shaft, so from there, you really can feel where the blade is and the twist can come from both hands. So whether your hand is choking down or on the handle, you can still get that twist factor in there. Um, that's pretty much it. That's the basics. Yeah. If you want to know more, DM me and we'll go for a private paddle. <laughs> <laughs> that's good stuff. So I might just go over that last point just in case you couldn't really hear Connor with the audio. So basically what Connor was trying to explain, I'm just gonna make this a bit shorter was that going against the wind and going against chop, you kind of, a lot of the mistakes that are made is that people don't really twist their hand. And, and that means that their paddle is coming back in full force and it's not very aerodynamical streamlined. So when you hit, you know, you're kind of gonna hit something and push that water in front of you. Better way to do it, like Connor was just saying, is to drop your top hand, kind of twist the paddle so that it slices through the air like a knife. And that way, if you hit the water, it's just gonna kind of skim and you're going to be fine and everything's you know everything's going to be sweet you're not going to fall in or anything you're not going to hit any chop or slow yourself down so it's these little tricks that you know it's one thing having really good speed like connor but these little tricks make you ultra efficient and then that you know makes you a better overall paddler it's, it's it's simple things you know the aerodynamic thing kind of bringing water towards you even changing your hip positioning slightly if you're on the board and these are the kind of things that make connor the best on the planet <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, guys. We're going to stop it right there, I think. And um, yeah, thanks for joining in for Tiki Talks. Say goodbye, Connor. <laughs> we'll see you guys later. That's it for this Tiki Talk. We'll get you next time. Yeah.